Hey, Lex here, and today I'm going to show you how I use Megascan's assets in Blender to bring things together really quickly that also look really good. Last time I talked about how to use Megascan's assets in Blender and a little bit about how to bring the models in and set the materials. If you haven't seen that video, I'll drop a link in the description. Um, but today I'm going to go through a scene that I used these assets in and a little bit of the process that I go through to bring this together. The first thing that I did, and obviously this goes through a lot of different steps, um, and a lot of it's just playing around. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do with these, so I'd really recommend just downloading some of the free ones from the Megascans website and playing around with it in Blender because you'll get ideas from just trying things out. But this one started when I saw these steps. I really like these castle step structures. There's a lot of cool organic detail in here, yet it's still kind of a man-made element it almost feels like there's a story behind it because they're kind of falling apart. I got this idea for these ruins, but to be honest, I just started with the steps. All I had was the steps, and then I began roughing out uh, this terrain, right? And this is just something that I, I used um, uh, displace modifier on. I did a little bit of like, you know, quick sculpting, um, but it was fast and dirty and, you know, it was super simple. Once I had that and I had the steps in place, it kind of made sense to have this water in there, to have this kind of like steep hill. Some of the pieces just start coming together as you get a, a visual for what it could look like. And I like the idea that it was a ruins, so adding the water just kind of made sense. It adds a really cool reflective element because you want to mix different material types. You've got the diffuse ground, but the really reflective glossy water, and it adds a really cool element to it. Once I had that, you want to find your focal point. For me, I already knew it was going to be the stairs, right? So they're kind of at this, you know, prominent position. And this is where you want to put the most detail. So you'll see right away from the model view that this is where I have most of the models is right around this focal point, right? And it really helps if you're going to break up these lines, right? By default, you know, if you pull these out, you know, you start with your terrain, you're going to have a lot of these sharp lines, right? And you don't want this because in nature, everything is rough and organic. There's always, you know, shifts and changes and details. The more you can break up these sharp lines with, you know, these different individual pieces, you know, they can just be sticking out, sticking out of the ground, you know, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, but that adds a lot of really good organic shape to it. And the great thing about these is you can take these uh, little ground pieces, right? And they've got like rocks and pieces of floor and there's different ones for different environment types and you can just take these and duplicate them and rotate them and really quickly get some like intricate detailed surfaces and then of course you can go in and clean up a little bit and delete some of the vertices that aren't showing right um but it allows you to quickly construct this terrain that looks really nice right before you have any of the trees in here um, you just have a couple of these key focal points, right? So I just brought in a few of these castle structures and this is literally all that I started with. I had the water and once you see these here, you kind of get an idea for what your scene should look like, right? You start finding a camera position and for me, this one made sense because it shows a lot of the scene really nicely. You can see all the nice little pieces and you've got stuff in the foreground, stuff that's in the background and then this stuff right here on this focal line. Um, I put the character here because characters are cool, they add some life to the scene, but if you're not inter interested in character modeling or character animation, then maybe you find something else to act as that focal point. But once you have this, then you can start adding, um, you know, different particle systems to the ground. I've got a few different particle systems here for the grass. We've got this one, which is a secondary grass. We've got this one, which is a weed. And these are all from Blender Gooey's Grass Essentials, uh, which is a great way to get 3D modeled grass that renders quickly and works in Blender, you know, right off the bat. Then I had a particle system for these trees that are in the background and a particle system for the main grass set. So those are gonna add some nice detail, uh, which means that, you know, when you're creating your ground here, the texture on the ground doesn't have to be super intricate. Honestly, this is just one texture from Megascans, and I put all the particle systems over top of it. So this texture is really just for the places where, you know, the grass might be a little bare or peeking through, uh, but you're not gonna see a whole lot of this, so it's not, it's not super important. Um, then of course, we've got these archways up here, and those are kind of, uh, uh, these. what's right here is kind of the main details, the main structures of the scene. And what you're gonna add in after that, like these background trees, these are just to kind of fill in the scene and uh, hedge hedge the vision in, right? So people are focused on, on the places where it's most important. Um, 
once you have this set up, and this is this is really fast to do with Megascan's assets because you know most of the hard legwork is done for you. All these are already you know photo scanned and optimized to be brought into Blender, and you get to play around with fun details like like I adding these like props. Like I created these lanterns around here that were a lot of fun, and one of the other things that I did was uh, I used um, I typed out some text in Illustrator. You could do it with any you know vector. Uh, 2D platform, uh, but I typed out some Japanese kanji in Illustrator, exported that as an SVG, and if you, um, I believe there's an add-on that you can enable in Blender to import SVGs. I don't think it's enabled by default. Um, I, you know, import those and they're automatically, by, by default, they're going to be a curve, which you can add a, an extrusion to, and then I just booleaned those out of this, um, uh, out of this this structure here, right? So since this is already built for me, I can focus more on these fun details. I don't have to worry about the structure itself. And these are kind of quick and dirty, but you know, from this distance, it adds a nice detail that's just going to add a little bit of uh, narrative flair to the image. You want to add things uh, that give it kind of some story, right? There's some words on the wall. What does it mean? What's going on, right? Who is this person? Um, it just creates a little bit of narrative behind it. And then really the last step, once you've got all these things in place, is really going in and finding uh, some unique angles, right? I believe this is the one I started off with because I think instinctively you're gonna try and find the angle that shows everything, but some of the best angles are the ones that don't show everything, that hide a lot. This one, you can't see quite as much of, of you know, uh, the different structures on the sides, but it gives you a really dramatic angle on the character and in the final render with the light coming through here, it really kind of has this dramatic pop. That's really nice. So it's important to find these angles and different ways of looking at the same scene that are going to bring out, you know, the most important details. One of the things that if I, you know, put a little more time into this image I would have done is probably break up this line here a little bit more because it's, it's really kind of sharp. Um, and uh, the particle systems help with that a little bit with the grass but really you're never going to see something this even or this you know uh, neat and tidy in um you know in real life in in nature um and the other thing that i would do is uh, probably gonna uh, animate this river using the flip fluids add-on because right now this is just an ocean modifier which really isn't ideal for doing like a river um, and the blender default fluid simulator isn't really great at doing large bodies of water so the new flip fluids add-on for blender is probably what I'm gonna go to to try and animate this and you know get some more detail out of the water but that's pretty much it and you can see how pretty quickly it's easy to come up with a scene it's got a lot of fun detail you have to bring the character to it but if you use um, these Megascans assets You've got a great head start in some really strong visuals and then you can add your style you can add these unique elements and kind of make it your own so leave a comment in the description and let me know what you think show me the stuff that you're working on i'd love to see mega scan stuff that you're doing in blender and let me know what you think i'm going to be putting out some more videos on this nature workflow maybe including some stuff like uh blender guru's grass essentials or some other photo scan asset packs um different ways that you can get you know, really good looking nature faster because it is kind of a, a specialized field. Um, one of the things that are really hard are trees. So I'm probably gonna be looking at speed tree, which is kind of the industry standard for trees uh, and doing photorealistic trees. So let me know what you guys think and what you might wanna see and I'll see you guys in the next video.